the question may come. Where can you find microcontrollers and older electronic equipment that you can salvage for use in your various electronic projects? Well, type you usually look for is older microcontrollers and older electronics because they're usually the ones that's easiest to uh, remove from the equipment and to reapply to new applications even when you cannot program them. Examples are certain uh, controller boards from old computer printers and the like like this one here as an A748 you could take UV erase that chip reprogram it with your own custom program custom firmware that is or you can just enable the external access and use an EEPROM or EEPROM to uh, operate the chip by Hard drive controllers, normal Winchester disk drive controllers, pretty much all of them will have either an 80048, 49, or 8051. Usually it'll be labeled like Winchester, usually it'll be labeled something like WD. 1015 which is the Winchester Corporation part number for the 8048 the 8049 programmed with their custom firmware but if you remove it from the controller board and hook up the external access like I did with this board here then you can put your own EEPROM on and use the microcontroller for any other application you may want. Another one is the hard drives that these controllers operate. Usually they have an 8051, 8049 or other newer microcontroller that or one or two of them, sometimes several, that control the functions of the drive. Modems often will have a microcontroller, well, pretty much always have a microcontroller of some type. The question is whether it's a type you can use. In this case, a wind bond. 78C31B, which is an 8051 equivalent with all the functionality. So I could pull this right off the board and already socketed, so I just pop it out and I could use it in any project I wanted without so much any problem. Some network cards like this old Lantastic. I have a Zigalog Z80. Well, in this case, uh, yeah, Zigalog Z80 S10 and a Zigalog Z80 CPU in it, which luckily these, the serial chip, and the CPU, and the RAM are all socketed. So it's e quick and easy to pull all the components off this board. That's a good prototyping hardware on this for future projects. And even your uninterruptible power supply controller board, in this case, uses a Philips 87C52E, which is a 8051 equivalent also socketed. Of course, they have one time programmable memory in them, 
which is irrelevant to your application because all you're going to do is short the external access pin and run external EEPROM or EEPROM to boot the processor off of. That's a good thing about the older 8041 and then 8042, 8048, 8049s, and 8051 Intel chips is with that external access pin no matter what is programmed into the EEPROM or just straight PROM of the microcontroller it's irrelevant to you because all you have to do is short a pin then it will run off of anything external you want to hook to it uh, ones you cannot use is a lot of newer microcontrollers like this one out of a battery charger controller it uses a fancy new surface mount but the problem with it is is the fact that it's a one time programmable there's no external access pin and so basically what it's programmed with is what it is it's basically scrap for you no matter what you want to do with it the other microcontrollers that you'll find useful in electronic equipment even if the pre-programmed pre is the Motorola MC68 100 series and stuff the reason why is these if you hook up the special functions pins you can tell them to boot off of an external ROM or memory source which allows you to bypass the internal memory and thus they are usable no matter what the internal memory is whether it's runtime programmable or reprogrammable or whatever it doesn't really make a difference to you the other ones you'll find in hard drives especially Western digital hard drives and stuff is the Intel ADC 196 style microcontroller and a leadless PLCC design which you can get a socket once you remove these from the hard drive board you can get a socket plug these in to use them in a normal through hole application they're kind of about like an advanced 8051 or whatever the 16-bit processor and they still have the external access pin so once you short that out then you can hook it up to any external ROM you want stuff basically a 16-bit descendant of the 80051 and I'm compiling software development stuff for this is out there plus the manufacturers spec sheets and everything so it's a good 16-bit prototyping processor and stuff and last source for microcontrollers maybe the very computer keyboard you're typing on like this one here a D8048 HC from NEC is pulled out of a standard IBM PC and it of course has external access pin and you can use it in an application just like this without any modification don't have to worry that there's keyboard firmware in here because once you activate that external access pin then the microcontroller pays no attention to the memory inside as I said the problem is with newer microcontrollers that you find on newer equipment is most of them do not follow the lineage of the older ones 
So they usually don't have any external access capability for debugging or programming features. So these things on new electronics is pretty much electronic scrap. So that's pretty much it for a video on sources for salvaging microcontrollers for your projects. If you look, there's plenty of them, as this tray will attest to. This stuff I salvaged from normal equipment, 8049s, 8048s, Motorola 6800 series, normal processor, Zigalog Z80s. There's plenty of stuff out there. All you have to do is look. Take care.